Welcome back to lesson 8. So last time we have discussed the slope of a linear function and we have learned that uh, at any point in a line the slope stays the same, it is constant. However, uh, not all functions are uh, linear. There are some functions that are curved. Okay, so we have also parabolas. We have uh, we we have polynomial functions, rational functions, quadratic functions, so on and so forth. So in this video, uh, we're going to look at the concept of slope. Okay, slope finding in relation to a curve. Okay, uh, so let's begin. Let's have an illustration of a curve. Okay, so here's our curve. So again, uh, this is a function. And let's see at a certain point, uh, how can we describe uh, a slope at this point? Okay, so of course, uh, looking at this point, it seems that the function at this point is increasing. Okay, so why is it increasing? Why can we say it's increasing? Uh, observe that it's actually going upward. Okay, so if we have to draw a line okay, touching this point, uh, we can actually observe that it's still increasing at this juncture. Okay, so picking another point in the curve, and we can observe that it's actually going downwards and drawing a line passing this point here uh, we can say that it's uh, decreasing okay, the function at this juncture at this instant okay is decreasing okay and if we have a point here the bottom part uh, trying to draw a line is passing through or touching through the point okay uh, we can describe that the function at this juncture has zero change okay as a zero change of rate uh, why is it zero because uh, as we can see the function uh, it's decreasing before this point and it's increasing after this point hence we can say that this is the turning point okay, it's one of the turning points of the curve hence if we have a turning point the change becomes zero so because it passes from negative to positive so what can we observe what can we say about this illustration so take note that the slope of a given curve may differ from one point to another point within the curve so it's very obvious from the illustration that the slope at a certain instant okay differs from another slope of another instant unlike in a linear function where the slope is always constant here if it's a curve function okay so we have now uh, this conclusion here it's not constant now the question is how do we determine the slope of a curve okay so we must take note that it's not easy to determine the slope of a curve because again it changes from point to point so but we, we really want to de determine at least a picture okay of the change occurring at a certain interval so let, let's say uh, we have here okay uh, this certain interval here from A to B so what could be the uh, slope or the change that occurs between this okay between this part of the function 
So we have an idea. We have uh, this probably this method of finding the slope. What if we find the average rate of change? Okay, so uh, in finding the average rate of change, we can go back to our illustration a while ago, and this is our function. Okay, so let's suppose that we can apply our previous concept okay, in finding the slope of a linear function. If we have two points here, let's say we have a value of x here, and in this scenario, instead of having a value for the second point, having a, a certain value on the second point, uh, let's assume that the second point depends on the first point. So there is a distance h between x and the uh, second point. But between the first point and the second point, in terms of the x values, there is a distance h. Okay, so we'll have this ordered pair here for the blue point we have x of x and of course for the green point we have x plus h and f of x plus h again we're only looking for the average rate of change so the average average rate of change is just a picture okay uh, we're trying to see the behavior of the function at these certain points in the curve and we try to draw a line connecting these points we'll have a second line okay, so we call this one as a second line because it passes through two points okay, uh, at least two points in the curve okay so this will give us a picture of the change the rate of change between these two points here and if we apply the idea of the slope since this is a line, second line is a line, we can actually apply the idea of the slope of a line in this situation. So we have delta y over delta x equals y sub 2 minus y sub 1 all over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. And if we substitute the values, if we have our y sub 2 being f of x plus h, y sub 1 being f of x, x sub 2 is x plus h, and we have x as our uh, for the first point as, a, as the x value here okay and this will give us this equation here and we have f of x plus h minus f of x all over h okay so this equation here gives us the slope of the second line okay? and what does the second line represents in this function okay so it is actually the average rate of change between these two points okay between the blue point and the green point it will give us the average rate of change take note here the slope of the second line which is again it is just the average rate of change does not give the best approximation of the rate of change Okay, so uh, take note, getting the average introduces errors. Uh, sometimes the, there is an extreme value or there are extreme values uh, occurring in between, between the curve. For example, what if our point here is this? Okay, so it's found here. And if we try to create a second line, uh, this does not give an accurate description of the rate of change because uh, take note there are instances of changing okay uh, values of the slope here we have the negative here then we have zero here and then we have positive again so uh, again it's just the average and average always introduces an error because of the assumptions assumptions in getting the average uh, take note there must there can be extreme values here that affects the uh, description of the rate of change so to have an accurate 
description of the rate of change, we need the instantaneous rate of change. Okay, so we need to determine the instantaneous rate of change or the change occurring at that instant. Okay, so this instance, for example, what is really happening in that point? So, how do we make a good approximation of the slope of a curve at a given point? Again, we look at the instantaneous rate of change. Here, we're going to use the concept of limits in determining the instantaneous rate of change. Okay? So, again, going back to the example, uh, we can actually try to look at the change at this instant, at this certain point. Okay. Uh, by applying the idea of limits. Okay, so how do we apply the idea of limits here? We are going to look at the function at every point in the curve. And how will you, how are we going to do that? We are actually going to move. Okay, we're going to move the second point, okay, the green point, because again, the, the green point depends on the first point to our given point here. Okay, we are going to move the green point to the blue point. Okay, so if we try to observe, now let me erase first. Okay, so as you can see, the second line changes. Okay, this is just another okay, situation. So from here, so we have again the second line and then the value of h decreases so this decreases and if we try to move it closer again so it keeps on decreasing and as you can see the second line the behavior of the second line change, changes also in such a way that if we really move it closer okay, closer to the blue point still a second line okay so as it approaches the blue point now the second line becomes a tangent line okay so a tangent line is just a line that touches okay so touches a point in a curve so there are no uh, what do we call this? There are no intersection of two points okay, between the line and the curve. It just touches the curve. Okay, so we call this one as tangent line to a curve. So, what happens if we try to do this? If we try to move, again, we can apply the concept of limits. And this becomes okay, this. So we have now the limit here okay so as you can see h approaches zero so why is h approaching zero it's because uh, remember from this point here okay we have our h h keeps on decreasing until such time it approaches the value of x okay and h is actually the distance okay distance between the two points and if it's going towards x approaching x it means that the value of h is approaching zero because the distance is approaching zero so now there is actually a change in notation instead of delta y over delta x we have now dy dx again this is a symbol uh, we have the leibniz we are using the leibniz notation okay so why do we use d instead of delta? Because d is actually uh, just a small approximation of changes happening between points. Take note, we are actually trying to look at every point, every uh, movement, okay? uh, every point, yeah, every point between these two intervals. Okay, so 
D is just referring to the small changes. We are now talking about very small changes, infinitesimally small. Infinitesimal. Okay. So, it's the same formula. Okay, however, there is already an involvement of limits because again, we really want to know the instantaneous rate of change at this given point. And for us to know that, we need to uh, move. Okay, we need movement. We need, uh, yeah, we need movement to approximate that instantaneous change. Okay? So H is approaching zero. So now, this is actually the slope of the tangent line. So take note, this is a tangent line here. And this slope of the tangent line is actually the instantaneous rate of change. Or it's an approximation. Again, it's still an approximation. But the error is really uh, very small. Okay, because again, we have already considered every point between this interval. So, take note that the slope of the tangent line in the previous slide, this is what we call as the derivative of the function. Okay, so the slope of the tangent line is the derivative of the function. And we have now this formula. So again, instead of using the second line, the formula for the second line, we are going to use this because... Uh, the instantaneous rate of change up, uh, has the best approximation of the slope at that certain point in the curve. Okay, so uh, we're done with this video. On the next video, we'll be having some examples okay, on how to apply the derivative, okay, the derivative of a function, the definition of the derivative of a function at a given point. So, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.